Look how wet these benches are. Who wants to sit on that? Not me. Good thing I got my cat tail man. Ah. I am just using kind of the spare off clippings of a bunch of cattail I harvested a few years ago. I was attempting to make a cattail mattress. And basically cattail is this incredible plant. It's very insulative. It's filled with this foam kind of core in the middle. But it's also so great in a survival situation because you can use it to make bedding, you can use it to make walls or roofs of um, different types of shelters, but you can also eat it. So there's many reasons to get to know this beautiful plant. I've heard that in Europe, particularly in Ireland, after it was um, colonized and deforested, people actually lit their homes with these little rush torches. And one of the experiments I'd like to do in the future is see if I can make that out of cattail. So stay tuned for maybe some experimentation. All right, so what I'm doing here is very simple. This is so easy that I have actually taught this to like seven year old kids. This is a really easy project to create for yourself a biodegradable handmade little cushion, almost like a yoga mat. You can roll it up and you can bring it with you into nature and you can use it to keep your bum from getting really cold in the winter. One of the best things about this is that it's not gonna last forever, maybe a couple years, and when you're done with it, it will literally biodegrade back into the earth. So my recommendation for people for harvesting your cattail is to do it in the fall because this is the time when the plants are naturally kind of returning to the earth. The big tall stalks die back every year and they fall down. And then it has this rhizomous structure underneath the floor of the marsh. So every year those shoots will come back up. So it's actually okay to harvest cattail leaves. You're not killing the plant. You're just taking the leaves that are gonna fall away anyways. So in the fall is a great time. Ideally you wanna get it before it starts to get these funny speckles on it but a little bit of that won't harm it too much. And then the other thing that's really important is that you thoroughly dry it. So what I did was I hung mine in bundles in my basement where fortunately I have fairly tall ceilings and I just let it air dry. And it took, I mean, it was probably three to six weeks for it to dry. So it does take some time. Okay, so when you're harvesting your cattail, you wanna go for the leaves. At least that is what I have done here. There's also a central stalk to the cattail, atop which you'll see the female flowers, which will be followed by the cattail head, which is this like brown corn dog shaped thing. Um, I'm not actually using these stalks. I harvested a few on accident, but these have a much different character to them. They're very woody and stiff and also a little bit more brittle. I could probably snap this fairly easily. I did use one right up here just to start my mat as like a nice stiff starting thing. So you don't necessarily need to go for stalks, but do go for the leaves. And you do go to harvest your cattail. Bring boots, because cattails grow in marshy wet areas and you're gonna want like nice tall boots for this job. The way that I started was I created five of these kind of long pieces of jute twine that I've doubled over. And with each of those, I just taped it to a solid surface. You can tie it onto the bars of a railing. Um, you can really use anything that's not gonna move on you so that when you start weaving, you have something to pull against. Um, sometimes you get these stiffer stalks. I didn't actually mean to harvest these, but I did get a few of the male part of the plant. And this is like nice and stiff. And I used that to start my mat up here. So what I did was I just tied an overhand knot like you would tie on your shoe onto that. And I tied another one underneath it. 
and I continued on in that way, tying overhand knots around bundles of leaves. So the way that I like to do it is I always tie the overhand knot in the same direction so that I get a nice even pattern here with my knots. So you can tie it left over right or right over left, pick whatever you want. I'm doing left over right. And what I found is the quickest is I just pre-tie all of my knots like this. I leave them loose so that there's room for me to shove the bundle in. And I found this is a lot easier than trying to hold the bundle up in here while tying the knots. So this is just something I learned over time. Then what I did was I had a look at my piles here. I trimmed these all down for the most part to be about the length that I want my mat to be, less an inch or two. Because when I'm done, I'm actually gonna trim it even more evenly on the ends here so it looks really nice. You'll notice that the lower part of the leaf is thicker and has more foam inside of it and the upper tip of the leaf is thinner and flatter and because I am doing this project to try to use up some of my excess cattail, I'm using all the parts of the leaf. Um, I've noticed that the tips on these have remained greener, so I'm putting these in also for a little bit of color. Each leaf has a natural, a little bit of a taper, thicker on one end, thinner on the other. So I'm making sure that I flip them back and forth in my bundle and that they're not all facing the same direction. So the bundle comes out being nice and even all the way across. You can make your bundles any size you want and depending on the size of your bundle, that's how thick your mat's gonna be. So you're gonna take your bundle, gently push it through your open knots like this, trying not to get anything caught. And then those are gonna kind of hold it for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start in the middle, like this, and tighten my knot. And you wanna really tighten it well, because this is a plant material, and I mean, all of this is made of plant materials. It will loosen over time, so you wanna make sure you've got it nice and tight to start. And that's one row, easy as that. So I'm just gonna keep going with that same pattern. And I will say, like, weaving with cattail is something that, you know, many cultures have developed an incredible art around. Um, in Japan, stuff like this is used to make their beautiful mats. Um, it's been used in North America, and there are lots of traditions around its use that I am not privy to. This weaving method that I've developed is, has just come from my own relationship building with this plant and kind of figuring out what I can do. And I really encourage you to try this, like experiment with different plants if you're interested in weaving, and they will teach you very quickly what they are capable and willing to do and what they're not and where their limitations are. And if you're really lucky, maybe you can find a teacher who carries some sort of native wisdom for you that they're willing to share that will speed up your learning process. But I do want to acknowledge and just honor the fact that this is a plant that humans have been in relationship with for a very long time that has been serving us in many different situations. So sometimes if you find that your bundle is a little bit too small after the fact, you can loosen your knots a little bit and shove another piece in from the side. bundle I tighten the previous knot before I tighten the new knot. So I tighten this one and then the one underneath it. And I think that because I started it with one of these stalks, these woody stalks, I'm gonna end it that way. I've actually never tried that before artistically. I just think it's kind of a cool idea. You can go through and tighten all of your knots after the fact if you tied it too loose, but a lot of work so <laughs> it's not the method that I would recommend and then I'll just double knot these end ones going left over right and then right over left if you tie the knot in two opposite directions you'll get a square knot 
So you're gonna tie one knot the way that you have been doing it, and then the second knot on top of that, you're gonna cross the opposite string over. It's okay, if you don't know how to tie a square knot, this is not like the most important part. Now what I need to do is trim the ends. It is a little bit tricky because this stuff is thick, right? But I'm gonna try with a nice thick pair of scissors and see how we do. Make sure you cut it straight. <laughs> not the quietest material, which in the end is one of the biggest reasons I didn't end up using and sleeping on my cattail mattress very much is because it's like, it's actually so loud if you're rolling around on it. Oh, doesn't it look so nice when the ends are cut? It's like, oh wow, that turned in like from something that looked kind of crappy to like this beautiful finished product. If you flip it over to the back side, you'll see there might be like a couple of odds and ends that are sticking out that you can kind of delicately cut out. Obviously, I'm not going to keep all these strings, but sometimes what I like to do is keep a couple of them, like maybe two. So let's say I cut this one and this one. These ones now can be used to wrap and bundle my mat. There. You could get fancy with it. Like you could make yourself a little like handle. How cute is that? All right, let's see if it's squishy and nice. We have to take this thing for an outing now. <laughs> it's a classic chilly, not that chilly, but very wet Pacific Northwest day. Perfect day to test out my cocktail mat and see if it'll keep my butt dry. Oh, luxury. Ironically, my sit spot is on a cattail marsh. <laughs> and as you can see, there's a lot of dead cattail. It's now early February, I guess late January, early February. And uh, these cattail leaves here have totally died back. They're going back to feed the earth and there's new little spring shoots coming up. 